today is the Motorola Atrix. Uh, it is the most powerful, the world's most powerful smartphone. And we say that for several reasons. First of all, it's the first time a dual core processor has been put into a smartphone. This allows to, you to maximize the power and speed as well as minimize the battery consumption that you have. Secondly, it's fast because it runs on uh, the HSPA Plus network, similar to AT&T's 4G HSPA Plus network, so lightning fast download speeds. And then third, we increase the RAM of this solution so that similar to your PC, if you upgrade the RAM, you'll get much faster performance, especially as you get higher throughput as well as higher processing power. You can see that it's actually quite responsive. The um, other elements of it are that it's big on resolution. So it not only has the world's first QHD display, HD standing for high definition, but it's also got a high-definition camera. It's got one camera on the front, which is a VGA camera, and then a high-definition camera on the back, which allows me not only to record high-definition video, but then play it back on a very bright and sharp high-resolution display, displaying a 24-bit color depth, which is bigger than what you normally find today. 960 by 540. So yeah, it's 35 35% more pixels than you'd find on something like a, a AMO LED screen today. It's also got a 20% larger viewable area than you'd find on a three and a half inch screen. So it's bigger and higher resolution than a lot of the phones out there today. The other thing is that it goes up to 48 gigabytes of internal storage. It comes with 16 gig on board, and then you can put in a 32 gig card to actually have 48 gigabytes of storage. So between the speed, which is supported by the dual core processor, the HSPA Plus network support, and the gig of RAM, between the resolution, which is the first QHD resolution device, and the HD camera on the back, as well as the memory and Moto Blur, this is the world's most powerful device. It also has a secure security mechanism, which is a fingerprint sensor on the back, so you no longer need to type in any pin codes to actually have your device secure. You can actually just swipe it and get right in and make the phone call as quickly as possible. But the way that this actually revolutionizes mobile computing and convergence is when you actually dock this into a solution. So I would be able to, on the train ride, going to my office, take this laptop dock, which measures in at under 14 millimeters thick. It actually also has a huge battery battery and it's charging the phone at the same time, and it's thinner than most people's smartphones. I can flip up this in the back, I can take my phone and dock it there, and it will instantly, well instantly, it will in less than five seconds, boot up into a full computing environment. Now you'll see two things here. One, on the right, you'll see that I actually have all of my web computing window, or all of my web computing windows or browser. It supports Firefox 3.6.13 as well as Adobe Flash 10. So you'll see more of the web faster. And secondly, on the left hand side, you'll see the mobile view, which is actually my Android phone. Now all of this, again, is being powered just by the phone. There's no intelligence, no processor, nothing in this laptop other than the battery, a screen, a keyboard, and a mouse. Down here, there's a set of predetermined apps, and then you can add other shortcuts. So on other computers that you might find. So I can put a bunch of bookmarks down here for other applications. So those are installed on the phone itself. That's where the Xbox does that. Correct. And you can put additional ones in here. Like I put a couple other others down here as well. But um, it allows you to have a full computing environment, not just with your Windows and your online computer, but also with your smartphone. So I can